Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I thought today I'd get on here and share some numbers of what I'm seeing in the market. Some of them may surprise you. And uh, I want you to compare them to what you see versus headlines. Because you know how some headlines just grab a topic. And uh, then when you look at the devil in the details, you find out, well, that just doesn't seem right. And some of the headlights are national. So I want to look at the Phoenix numbers. I want to start out, too, by showing you that Homes.com uh, put out a prediction on where real estate was going to be this year, and they are very far off, which again illustrates that even the big guys don't get it right. So, which is why I don't predict going out one or two years, or even just I hesitate to go out more than six months looking at things. But there's some stuff out there. Stick with me. I think you're going to find some of this very interesting. Uh, we'll start with the big driver in the room, and that's mortgage rates sitting here today at an average of 6.52 let me refresh it and see if it's changed anything yep it went down to 6.49 cents breakfast so that is improving now when we talk about rates the headlines that are out there now is there's a rate cut coming in september and people are waiting for the rate cut spoiler alert every time we've gone and even did some live streams showing when the Federal Reserve comes out and says, okay, we're lowering rates by 0.25. They went up. Because the bond market, the traders, have already taken that into consideration. It's already baked in the cake. Now, we wait till September to see if they've gotten ahead of their skis or if it's going to be where it is. But I think odds are that you're going to see a slight uptick in rates the day they announce the cut versus a reduction. So... People that are waiting and saying, and now this isn't to say go out and buy a house now, hurry up because rates are not going to come down. They are going to reduce the overnight rate that they charge between banks and them. But it doesn't mean that mortgage rates are going to go down because if you look internally in their data, they are letting mortgage-backed securities expire and they're also letting their treasuries expire. So in other words, they're not actively buying them like QE QE1 and QE2 and QE3, and that was really pushing rates down. So I think September is going to be a big nothing burger versus the anticipation of the upcoming rate cut that you're going to hear on Channel 12, Channel 5, and Channel 10, because I'm seeing a lot of that. Now, the other thing I'm seeing here, too, this is the prediction that I wanted to share with you, that uh, National Housing and Economic Forecast 2024 Mid-Year Update. Long-awaited mortgage rate relief finally arrives. But here's the kicker here. It says here, home price growth has been much stronger than forecast for the U.S. economy remains resilient in the face of higher rate environment. As a result, we revised our forecast from a decline of 1.7 to a gain of 4.6% for 2024 as a whole. Now this kind of flies in the face of people are telling you prices are coming down, they're diving, the crash is coming. They thought we were going to be down 1.4 and we're up 4.6. Home sales are expected to register only slightly higher than initially forecast with an increase of 0.8% for 2024. This would mean a total of 4. million homes, the second annual smallest since 2012. And so I'm going to dive into those numbers here locally because that's that's a national number, but the bottom line is they predicted us to decline, and we didn't. So this has been a year of surprises for a lot of people. Now, the thing I like to look at here locally is if you listed your house, uh, what is your success rate? Did you sell it? And it's healthy, 97.9. Now, when we got in the silly season here, we had 101.8 and uh, 101.8, a lot of sales. But 97.9 is not in below normal stats as far as a sales to list price ratio. Now, towards the end here, I've got some other numbers on list pricing versus the actual sales per square foot that is actually kind of confusing to me. And maybe when I show it, some of you guys can clear that up for me and tell me what I'm looking at because it's a head scratcher. The other thing I'm looking at, the national headlines with Redfin says that cancellations are spiking up and cancellations are here in the green number. And that's down, not up. And it's slightly higher than a few years in the past, but lower than 
last year. So while nationally we're seeing canceled listings go through the roof, not feeling it here. Saw it go up a little bit a few, couple weeks ago. Listings under contract. This is where when somebody says how slow is it, this is how slow it is. We don't have as many listings going under contract. <clears throat> I read a comment on a page yesterday from a video last night that said, listings went up by a thousand in Phoenix. Here it comes. And he said over the weekend. And I said, I don't know what numbers you're looking at. I'm not see I track it every day, every day. Well, I might miss a day here and there, but uh, new listings are not hitting the market. And here they are, new listings. See the green? This is year to date. It's not higher than last year. It's not higher than the year before. It's slightly higher than 2023. So, yes, it is slightly higher than the year before, but not by much. You had 54,000, 53,000 um, last year and 61,000 this year compared to 2021 of 71,000 and 2022 at 76. So when you say all these listings are hitting the market, they're not. I'm not seeing it. I'm also not seeing it when I track my seven-day moving average. And it is kind of unusual in that um, we're actually seeing more contracts than new listings coming out. Well, about 90, 95%. So I'm not going to show that to you right here now. It's not, not going to make sense. But the narrative that says that all these new listings are flooding the market, we're not feeling it here. We're not seeing it. We're seeing it in Florida for different reasons. We're seeing it in Austin, Texas, especially with the advent of all the new construction. Now, here's the one that I said is kind of a head shaker for me. So I'm going to ask you for your help on this. So I see the average list price per square foot. So I'm only comparing it to last year. Otherwise, it's a really busy chart. So you see here, we started out at $358 per square foot. This is what people want to get for their home. And now we're down to $342 per square foot. We hit a peak of $379 per square foot in March. Okay, so this tells you, I want, I want, I didn't get, I didn't get. Okay, now, does this equate that mean that prices, when they close, are falling as well? And that's where I looked here, and I said, well... Yeah, no. Um, so let's let's take a look at the beginning of the year. In other words, the asking price was three hundred fifty-eight dollars, and then the monthly average sales price per square foot was two eighty-three. So does that really mean that the asking price was three fifty-eight minus two eighty-three? Were they off by that much? Especially when we go back and see that we have a ninety-seven percent close to list ratio but yet i show here there's a huge difference between the asking price and the actual sales price and while everybody was saying prices were going down they weren't they were going up all the way through june then the monthly average sales price started to come down price per square foot most of that is seasonally driven because of the luxury market we see that in the summertime then it starts to go back up as you get in the fall. So if we were just to be a chart statistician, we would expect to see that this average sales price per square foot might start to go up again as we get into what we'll call the fall. And uh, but it remains remains to be seen. So those there aren't any numbers jumping out there right now that are you know flashing a big red signal. But there's plenty of numbers out there that say this is getting confusing versus what I'm reading. This screen here shows you the closings over list price, and it's showing that the biggest one is between three and four hundred thousand. That's simply because there aren't that many there. Um, there were twelve hundred sixty-four of them. Percentage over list at twenty-two percent. Those tend to get into a little bit of a bidding war, especially by investors in that price range. The higher prices you get up, like six hundred to seven thousand, you're only seeing twelve percent of them going over their list price, and the average over list price is a paltry $5,000. So some people are just offering over list to ask you to help with either buy down or closing costs. So that's where we're at with the bidding wars not showing up. There's talk of the rush of buyers coming out if interest rates get down below 6%, and that remains to be seen. If we have a rush of buyers coming out and the inventory doesn't show up because you still got people that are sitting in the threes, are they going to refinance 
to the five, so they get another house. So uh, that's where we're waiting, waiting to see. Not going to see it next month. Not going to see it the month after that. Uh, December may have some kind of a rate cut in it as well. Um, you know, sit on our hands and watch the numbers. The other thing I wanted to point out too, and I've showed this on a couple different occasions, is the confusion over the changes that have come about August 1st in our market. And I'm still seeing articles out there today by our local news saying new changes coming August 17th. Seriously, guys, do a little journalism here. We, we flipped the switch August 1st. I mean, so it nationally, the National Association of Realtors has said these changes need to be implemented by August 17th, but we did it early. So we're suffering the confusion early. Everybody else is ready to go. Now, Michigan, get this. Michigan is suing the National Association of Realtors saying, you can't force us to do this, and you can't force us to have membership in the National Association of Realtors. It'd be interesting to see what happens with that. But here's the form that I want you to really pay attention to because it can be confusing, and it's not as binding as you think it is. This is called the Buyer Broker Agreement to Show Property. So the National Association of Realtors, and our, this is our local MLS, that says, look, you can't show a home without an agreement. And the agreement's simply there to outline what we charge. Now, who pays my fee, whether it's the seller or whether it's the buyer, that's all negotiated. So we lay that out there and go, but here's, here's what I'm asking. Um, the confusion is that when you sign, sign one of these buyer broker agreements to show property that you're locked in. Ah, let me show you something, my friends, because this question came up in a group that I was in and we took a deep dive. And every time I go to click my handy dandy magnifying glass, it decides to not work for me. So I'm just going to have to highlight it. It says broker compensation. If broker represents buyer in the purchase of a property as indicated on the purchase contract that was signed prior to the expiration date, buyer agrees to compensate the broker as following. If. So what does that mean? Well, you've signed this agreement. Rick, show me homes. I'll date this thing for one day, two days, three months. Give you permission to show me homes. You can go sign that with another agent, folks. You can give another agent permission to show you homes because this isn't binding. It's only binding if in the process of showing you homes, we enter into a contract before the expiration of this showing form. Procuring cause is gone. Procuring cause is who's the agent that showed the home that actually got the buyer to decide to purchase a home. And then when you have an agency agreement with that buyer, who circumvented that and then went to you, then they get these discussions of procuring cause. Not anymore. Why? Because you have this touring agreement. And the touring agreement says if. That simple word, if, means there's no such thing as procuring cause anymore. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that's how I'm reading it, and that's how many people are reading it. So it's basically saying, look, you're giving me permission to show the home, and if we find one and we write a contract, this is my fee. We'll do our best to make sure that the seller pays for it or you can pay for it. We can discuss that at that time. There's a lot of back and forth that goes on during the transactions now. But I don't want people people to feel bound. I don't want fe people to say, my God, I'm locked into this guy for six months. That would not be fun. And we're seeing some of that now open houses. OK, I had mentioned the other day that if you go in an open house and somebody says they have to you have to sign this buyer broker agreement to show property, that part's not true. It's not true. It's not required. You can see it in our local MLS where they say it's not required. But for the sake of argument, if somebody's really pushing on an open house, sign the doggone thing. It's not binding anyway. You're just giving that guy permission to show you the home. So you agents out there that are trying to push people to sign this agreement in an open house, um, you're you're swimming upstream, my friends. You need to really dive in and take a look at the rules and uh, try not to make it so uncomfortable for our friendly buyers out there. So I hope this stuff helps. Let me know in the comments what you think about some of the numbers that I shared. I know some of you will disagree with it. And Rick, you're all wet. That's okay. I still love you. Anyway, have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Take care.